Welcome to Let's Talk About Biology. In this video, I'm gonna tell you all about moose. And if you stick around, you'll learn what their strangest predator is. Alces alces has the common name moose in North America and elk in Europe and Asia. Moose are mammals in the order Artiodactyla. This order is even-toed ungulates. An ungulate is generally a hooved animal and they're divided into two categories depending on how many toes they use to support their weight. Even-toed ungulates contain animals such as hippos, pigs, camels, and whales. Yeah, whales. I know this is super confusing, and yes, I know, whales don't have hooves. So if you want me to do a video on ungulates in the future, let me know down in the comments below, and I'll be sure to do that. Moose are the largest members of the family Cervidae. Others in this family include elk, deer, and caribou, otherwise known as reindeer. Moose populations began to decline in the mid-19th century due to overhunting and habitat loss. Fortunately, eight of the nine subspecies are considered a species of least concern on the International Union for Conservation of Nature Red List. One exception is in Minnesota, Michigan's Upper Peninsula, North Dakota, and Wisconsin, Moose are listed as a species of special concern because the numbers still continue to drop rapidly in these areas. Adult females, also referred to as cows, can weigh anywhere between 200 and 490 kilos. That's between 400 and 1,000 pounds. Adult males, also referred to as bulls, can weigh anywhere between 380 and 700 kilos. That's between 830 and 1,500 pounds. Moose technically can live between 15 and 25 years, but they generally don't live past 20 in the wild. The gestational period of moose is 18 months, so that's double what it is for humans. And that's not even the longest gestational period. Let me know if you want me to do a video on in the future on the animal with the longest gestational period. Cows generally carry just one calf at a time, and they become independent at 12 months of age. Other than size, there's one key way to tell males and females apart. If it's between April and December, it's the massive antlers that males grow in preparation for mating season each year. This makes moose antlers the fastest growing animal organ, reaching fully developed between three and five months. Even though it may seem like a waste of energy for them to drop these giant head ornaments each year, it actually saves them energy. The habitat that moose live in gets very cold in the winter and it can be hard for them to find food. By dropping their antlers at the start of winter, they require less energy to sustain themselves. Both males and females have what's called a bell. The bell is a fold of skin that hangs just below their chin. The exact function of the bell is unknown, but there are some hypotheses discussed in the scientific literature. The hypotheses include temperature regulation, signaling fitness and fertility to potential mates, or a secondary sex characteristic that signals dominance much like antlers do. Moose are generally solitary, and you won't really see two of them together unless it's mating season or it's a mother and her calf. Adult moose can store up to 100 pounds of food in their stomachs at a time. That's as much as like a 13 year old. Moose are herbivores and their diet consists of many different plants and fruit. In order for them to maintain their body mass, they have to eat 23,000 calories every single day. That's 10 times what humans require. During the summer, there's all sorts of foliage for them to snack on, and they have no problem reaching those 23,000 calories. But in the winter, they're really just limited to deciduous trees and shrubs. And deciduous just means that they don't drop their leaves in the winter. One thing moose will do is forage for aquatic plants. They have been known to dive to the bottom of lakes at 5.5 meters or 18 feet deep. The complexity of their nostrils makes them a specialist at taking advantage of this low competition food source of aquatic plants. And their fur is made up of two layers, a woolly underlayer 
and an outer layer that has hollow strands that provides insulation and flotation. Not only will they dive in lakes, but moose that live on the coast will also dive in the ocean. This can lead them to be prey for orcas. Yeah, orcas are a predator of moose. Orcas are the only confirmed marine predator of moose, but they do have a few terrestrial predators that regularly hunt them. Siberian tigers, gray wolves, and brown bears are the few that will take on a healthy, adult, full-grown moose. Many carnivores and omnivores will eat a dead or dying moose when given the chance, but they will not risk it with a healthy one. With humans encroaching on the moose habitat in the last several decades, the numbers of encounters have been increasing. Moose can be very dangerous, and you want to make sure that you give them plenty of space as not to frighten or startle them. Moose can run up to 35 miles per hour. That's faster than your average golf cart. I had an encounter with a moose in my backyard once. I grew up in Michigan, and so it wasn't entirely unheard of, but I lived in town, so it was definitely unexpected. Funnily enough, the encounter was on April Fool's Day, and when my dad and I called for my mom to get my dad's camera, she didn't believe us. Now, the encounter ended fine. We called animal control while my dad took a few pictures from afar. The animal control came quickly, anesthetized the moose, and brought her back out into the woods outside of town. Anyways, encountering a moose on a hike or in your backyard isn't the only way for it to be dangerous. Between 2000 and 2004, just four years, there was a whopping 3,400 vehicle collisions with moose in Maine alone, and over half of them resulted in injuries. When I was learning to drive, moose was the number one thing we were taught to look out for. Yes, watch for deer, watch for black bears, but watch for moose. The reason that moose collisions can be so much more dangerous than a deer collision is because of how tall a moose is and where their center of gravity lies. Most car hoods only reach the legs of the moose, so on impact, their head, antlers, and body can come through the front windshield pretty much crushing the entire front row of the cab. Now, whether you're an animal lover, or you love your car, or you just don't want to get hurt, it is in everyone's best interest to give moose, and all wildlife for that matter, the space that they deserve to keep everyone safe. If you have any questions about what I discussed today, you have a suggestion about what animal I should talk about next, or just a general question about biology, let me know in the comments down below, or you can message me on Instagram or Twitter. Thanks for learning with me. See you next time. Did I get something wrong in this video? If I did, let me know. Leave a comment or send me a message with a link to a research paper or other reputable source, and I'd be happy to do a little update.